Pedal steamers were first introduced in Australia in 1853, around the same time as the beginning of the gold rush. The South Australian government were interested in accessing land away from the coast for farming purposes. They offered a large sum of money for whoever could complete a long journey down the Murray River. Two men were successful, a boat racer named Frankie and Willie, a local farmer. The success of these men brought attention to pedal steamers and proved their suitability for travel on the Murray. All of the early paddle steamers were crafted from local river red gums found on the banks of the Murray River. There were two main designs. One had a single paddle wheel called a stern wheeler. The other had two smaller wheels, one on each side, known as a side wheeler. While being less manoeuvrable, the stern wheeler was the popular choice as it was less prone to accidents when towing heavy loads. Paddle steamers were used to collect and deliver many different items of trade. Wool and wheat dominated, but wood, useful metals and fresh produce were also carried between towns. These supplies strongly supported the gold fields, as well as greatly expanding the network of trade. Many jobs were created thanks to paddle steamers and the trade they made possible. Once jobs were created, towns swiftly sprung up all along the Murray River. Echuca became the new Melbourne, a bustling hub of activity. Mildura, Moama, Swan Hill and Albury were also established as a result of paddle steamers. Their rate of growth was amazing. After 10 years, there were 20 paddle steamers on the river. After another 10 years, there were more than 200. While paddle steamers were much faster than a horse and cart, they required huge amounts of energy. They were so inefficient that after two hours of travelling, one tonne of wood was burnt. As a result, huge stacks of wood had to be piled along the river. Wood was also used to make wharves, jetties, houses, and of course the paddle steamers themselves. River red gum was the wood of choice because it was strong as iron, resisted rot, and maintained its structure in the harsh Australian conditions. It didn't take very long before river red gums became scarce. Once they were removed, their roots were unable to hold the river banks together and dramatic erosion followed. As more and more soil ended up in the river system, water quality fell. Grazing cattle next to the river compounded this problem. River traffic demanded that any fallen trees in their way must be removed. Special de-snagging boats were created solely for this purpose. Unknowingly, this practice was removing not only obstructions, but also the habitat of the Murray Cod, which lay their eggs in the shelter of these fallen trees. When the local men left for the First World War, there were no longer enough workers to run the paddle steamer trade to the same extent. Ironically, the last task of the paddle steamers was to transport railway sleepers, which then superseded them as the favoured form of transport. Roads were built, cars were introduced, and paddle steamers were soon abandoned and forgotten, many sinking or demolished for parts. Some were restored for use as houseboats, and others are now used in tourism. If you know what to look for, there are still many signs that paddle steamers once thrived on the Murray River. There are a number of jetties and wharves dotted along the riverbanks. Erosion from tree removal is still evident, and Murray cod numbers are suffering from the lack of strainers. It's important for visitors to the Murray River to notice these reminders, but also to enjoy the few iconic paddle steamers still on the river today.